Hello, and welcome to Moral Gates of Pyrocast. I'm ZK, and today we have a Zal versus Orzu between Santa and YJ Zu, <coughs> who we'll just be calling Zu from now on. Uh, so yeah, both of them going pretty standard, just going for a teapot, a teapot scout, and a really fast expand on both sides. So what's interesting about Immortal, for those coming from uh, another RTS background, say like StarCraft, you do have your free resources. You have the Alloy, the Aether, and then you have uh, the Pyre, which is an overworld ability type of uh, resource that you can only collect by killing camps all across the map. Or you collect it naturally every once, once every three seconds or so. Uh, we see here Santa going for as economically greedy as he can, going for all of his Aether, all his tech buildings, all of his tech structures before he puts down any type of production buildings. Once you get his production building, that's when the units come out. And we see Zhu doing close to that. We'll put down the Legion Hall after only one Aether. So not a big difference between both builds, both going for very economical style, rel willing to attack into the other one. Now if you look at Immortal, there are four different Immortals and two factions. So each Immortal changes the faction by having three different abilities, the overworld abilities that you cast with Pyre, and by having two different units uh, compared to the normal unit kit that we would have for that faction. So while this game only has two Immortals so far, they are planning to have three to eight Immortals per faction, and the game will launch with five factions with more being added on afterwards. Now the way this is going to be balanced is an open system to balance, so you can't expect the same StarCraft trilogy of every single matchup is balanced here. Uh, you, you'll probably have to play a few different Immortals to really figure out how you want to play against your opponent. In any case, at this point we only have four Immortals, and they're all four pretty decently balanced where each of them can take out the other ones with different abilities, different units, and really just figure out how to play. Now we see Zhu going for his second tech building, so unlocking that tier 2 production of units. Uh, getting those absolvers with dervish and AOE units and zone control units. While on Santa's side, uh, he is upgrading to the growth heart to the god heart, which will allow him to unlock his second tier units as well, either going for the bone canopy for those air units, or those frumps which are muta-like units, just harassing air harriers that can go around really fast around the zones. Or he can go for the more ground-based units with the resonance, which are zone control units with a lot of range, similar to a siege tank. Here we have the little spearman, this bone stalker is going around, roaming, trying to figure out exactly what his opponent's up to, but also going for that important pyre. Say Zeus already a bit ahead with that 25 fire, but he puts down the tower for so those citadels that you have on the map that your units start with allow your units to heal, which is pretty useful, and also give some good defense buff. And Zeus really getting Santa on the ropes here, finding a way in, and going for those early symbiote kills, you might not get. But going for the tech building here, Santa is forced to retreat and come and kill these two units. Hopefully he gets it back in time, and Zu is not really interested in going for it. He doesn't think he can get it before Santa gets back, which might be the case, and just makes the tower attack. And see, even even though he didn't do any true damage, he didn't even kill a moat, it was still pretty worth it given that with his attack, he forced Santa back. Santa can't go for second fire camp, just denying Santa that map control has been excellent play from Zu. I see Bone Stalkers moving out. Santa wants to get back map control. And what building go for? He went for the Amber Room, unlocking his Siege Tank, his I Cores, uh, his Resonance, and uh, yep, double Resonant right now. So two Siege Tanks coming up. Or Siege Tank like units. They're a bit lower range. Uh, they can attack units close to them. But very, very powerful shots with AoE from a pretty decent distance. See how Zoo wants to deal with it, but Zoo doesn't care too much. He's going for a big push already. Hopefully, he's hoping Santa didn't notice it. Uh, but Santa's gearing up for it. He's getting the Omnivores, uh, so static defense to really help shore up his defense against this really powerful attack coming from Zoo. And the Bone Stalker's attacking first before anything shows up. And the Absolvers are the units you need to be careful of, but the Resonance pretty much hard counter them as soon as they can siege up. Uh, once they deploy, it's really hard to go into it. And yeah, he's focused firing them. Both of them want to be careful. And just getting a pretty decent engagement, but he has to move forward very slowly. His, his entire aren't range, his absorbers are range, but a bit out of range of everything else right now. Santa needs to be careful not lose his resonant. And the last throw comes in, but it doesn't kill it. Oof. Good play from Santa, great defense. Having the Omnivore as well helps a lot with that static defense. Doesn't lose his expensive units. We can look here, we have the army value of both players, both around 700. So it was a pretty really close to even trade. We'll see when they want to expand their third base. And Zoo. Knew it would be hard to run out, so put his absorber here. Oh, he might get resonant, and resonant goes down. Great last kill for this absorber that was going to go down eventually, but 
Thanks to that, he was able to get one last kill and a resonance, taking more damage he wanted to. I was saying earlier, the Citadels, which can place for an exchange for fire, also heal your units, so you can just he get back here, heal up your units, and then head back out. Anzu, what is his next test? He's going for Dervish, great against those early units like those uh, Bone Stalkers, great at, great at dealing with light units. And behind this, going for a second Soul Foundry. It's not heading up for air quite yet. On Santa's side, no air either. We're still setting up with those very strong ground, ground type of push. Zeus getting that pirate, but Santa really saving it up. Can use for his ultimate pirate ability, the Great Hunt, which might be seeing. But of course, there are other abilities that Zoe can go for, which are pretty powerful. Teapot here keeping an eye on everything. Neither of them actually went for the third yet. You usually see your players take their third base to really get their economy up and running. And now they seem kind of worried about the other one attacking against them. Say that with Zoo putting down the secondary tower. That is one of Orzum's ability, being able to put these citadels a bit anywhere on the map. Uh, while most other players are forced to put it on foundations based on these towers, uh, these derelict towers you can destroy, then you can place your tower on top. But you are forced to wait for him. Well, let's see Zoo what his next push might look like. He's getting a few Zephyrs, and Santa's really concentrating on completely ground force. This is a really powerful push, not going for those for those fronts. For, uh, means that he has that much more economy to put into this ground push, and this is going to be a very powerful ground push, especially with all that power already collected. Underspine here gives Rootway, Rootway being the land on which these units can put down their can put down their uh, their buildings. Also gives the residents extra range, so having all of these will be a perfect mix here for this push from this high ground, going for that third base. And Santa behind all this never went for third base either. Doesn't want to lose that underspine. Can send it back here. Yeah, Santa's really busy on not losing the underspine, but it might just be too little too late. The two dervish get on top of it. Lose on Dervish in the process, Underspine coming forward. And this is a big army from Santa. He's going to be a slow pushing here with the Resonance. And this was going to take everything Zoo has to defend this. Best response might be some air units, but he doesn't seem to be going for that response right now. Santa seems in a great position. Zoo has his work cut out for him if he wants to save this third and save his life in the game. We'll see. Okay, he's pushing forward. Going for those few Resonance that are on Siege, getting the first one. And the Absolvers are getting focus fire just a little bit. Two Resonance down, but there's still four at the back. Zoo has to pull back and just get his defenses short up. Behind is this. Santa still continuing on his two base all in. Making all his units he can and just keep on pushing forward with the Resonance. And the push keeps on coming. Here comes the here comes the Zeph Zentari. Dervish trying to do some damage, but it's not quite enough. Resonance the back, so powerful. Uh, he gets another one. Only four Resonance left. There's more coming. And the push never ends, but of course, reinforcement for Zoo are just a little bit closer. He has to figure out exactly what units he wants to make to counter this. And it seems like a difficult choice right now. He's in range of the Absolver, and Absolver is also in range of that Resonance, so that one goes down. And there goes the zone control for Zoo. Zoo tries to push forward a few Magi to heal up his units, but that's only two Magi. If you're looking at the army value, 2600 to 1000, Santa's in a winning position. And Zoo let his base finish. At this point, it might have not been optimal. Uh, uh, this is fine for Santa. Free base. And behind this, he finally takes a base. He did the damage he wanted. He gains the lead from delaying his economy to get for this big, powerful push. And now he can just enjoy this lead while his opponent is still going for more basic units. Nothing, none of the advanced deck. He's going for the, uh, for thrones after, afterwards. So a big, powerful crown jewel type of capital ship. They can really take down the units really quickly. The other side, Dervish coming in to try and harass again. However, there's a full wall here. Even an Omnivore to help defend. He won't be able to get in here. And he's trying to break out. Resonance are still siege up. Pillar comes down. Ultimate of Orzu. Setting down. Giving some attack boost to all the units. But are there enough units? Resonance are powerful. They're siege. They're attacking. And the reinforcements even coming forward. Fortunately, wasn't enough for Zoo. And Santa, at this point, has the bigger army. Pushing forward. Only 200 for his opponent. And can he destroy this tower? A lot of HP on this. Not much power. How much attacking power? But doesn't matter at this point. Santa just has too big of an army. Kills it, brings it down, and keep pushing forward. Killing the Legion Halls, Legion Halls, all the production structures also double as supply, so no more supply coming for Zoo. And Santa wins this wonderful best of one against Zoo.